Another big thing is we just hit 50,000 subscribers. Then we moved into deficit reverse lunges. How to structure a workout. There's so many things. I've been watching this thing like a hawk. Guys, I think this mantra has cracked in it. Hopefully it's all. I'm so excited. Welcome back to another video. I hope everyone's doing so well. I'm feeling so juiced. First of all, I saw 11 11 twice. Minor detail, but I feel called to share because my car clock is wrong from my phone clock. So I saw it my phone clock real time and car clock time. And I just went to the bank and there's so many things. Another big thing is we just hit 50,000 subscribers this morning. It's January 20th right now. We just hit 50K. I don't know how to act. Not that I need to act a certain way, but I just, oh, that Ford runner is so sick. But I just am like, it's crazy to me. Cause it's like, just like, I know there's still not 50,000 people like super invested in my content still, but just the fact that my content has impacted people enough to the point where 50,000 people we're so moved enough to like click that subscribe button like blows my mind like whether it being at some point in time That's just a lot like I can't fathom that many people and I just feel like this is just a milestone in general So I feel like I always sound like a broken record when I say thank you But you guys know like thank you so much so thankful for each and every single one of you, you guys This has been my dream since I was 17 years old and it is so insanely crazy having this like be in motion and having it finally come to life and doing this full time. And that leads me to the next thing is I finally opened up, this is kind of boring stuff, but exciting stuff for me on more of like the business end of what I do. I finally opened up a bank account for LithIt and it's just making me feel more official and more like I'm really developing this into a business, which I'm really excited about. So all this is happening today. And so it's just a lot at once and I'm just super grateful, super thankful. I just can't get over it. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. I'm feeling so grateful. Also this morning I had amazing, amazing, amazing meditation session where I wrote down what I was grateful for beforehand and then I meditated like on it. When I tell you like I felt the vibrational frequency of gratitude like I did and it was so freaking sick and I just felt so elevated and I think that's what people miss. Like I put out my story like I said gratitude is a state of vibrational being like you just have to tap into it. It's not an emotion. It's like a state of being that's so freaking powerful that attracts so much goodness into your life when you're there. But we're gonna go hit legs super quick. This is really early for me to go to the gym. It's 11.20. So we're gonna go try to hit legs and make it quick, quick, quick. All right, welcome to the workout. So of course, we're starting off with some foam rolling. I literally only do this pretty much on my back because it feels so good and usually my back cracks and it's like the best thing of the entire world. So I'll foam roll for a little bit and then I'll do some dynamic stretches, which you guys have definitely have seen all of these things before. I mainly focus on hip openers, especially a day like today because this is mainly a quad focused day, quads and glutes. And I'm also definitely going to be squatting today. So when I know that it's going to be a quad focused day and there's going to be more movements where there's more hip flexion, I definitely make even more of an intention to do some hip opener mobility exercises so that's mainly what you're seeing here to get my hips ready for all the squatting motions and things that i'm going to be doing today so this whole warm-up routine usually takes me anywhere between like eight to ten minutes honestly usually not very long but it just gets me ready for movement and like I said, we were doing squats today. So this is only my second or third time squatting since breaking my wrist because I haven't really been able to have a bar over my back. So I've been working back at it and trying to get my form down again. But I always start with warm up sets as you're seeing here. So I just started with the bar. Then I moved the height of it just because it was a little bit too high for me. And then I popped on 25 pound plates. And then I did this for probably anywhere between like five to 10 reps. You don't want to do too much with your warm up sets because you don't want to exhaust your muscles already. You just want to get them warmed up and get the blood flowing so then i popped on 35 pounds tried to see how that felt try to get the form down with some heavier weight again for like five ish reps here and then i put on my working weight so here i did 155 pounds for four sets of eight which honestly i was stoked about this because last time i squatted i worked up to 145 but i was able to do 155 for my working sets all the way through for all four sets so in terms of form here i have the bar you don't want it to be too high where it's on your spine. That's what's going to cause neck pain. So it's right on my traps, if you will, or my back muscles. So that's really important. I have my hands in a comfortable grip, not too close to my face and not too far wide out. It's kind of right above where my elbow would naturally sit. And I always say this with any squat, you want to sit back and down like you're sitting into a chair. So I always initiate the movement by pushing my hips back and down. I'm keeping my neck in line with my spine throughout the whole movement. I'm not looking up. Um, that's just going to cause some stress on your 
your neck and with your spine. When you're sitting back and down into that chair, when you're lowering into the squat, I personally like to shift my weight onto my heels and then I'm driving up through my heels, through my glutes and through my quads to push me up out of that movement. Pushing up through your heels, like I'm saying, is definitely gonna make this more glute focused, which is always my focus. And what's really important is depth here. Don't worry about hitting ass to the grass. That's really gonna come down to everyone's individual ankle mobility and hip mobility. So as long as you're having your thighs come parallel with the ground, that is considered a full complete rep. As you can see, I don't have very good hip mobility, so I just kind of stop parallel with the ground. Still working on my form here with this, always I'm working on improving, but those are my main pointers for you guys. Then we moved into deficit reverse lunges on the Smith machine. These things are freaking brutal, but they're a beast and they're amazing. So I did four sets for, I did eight reps the first three sets, and then the last final fourth set, I was just going crazy and I decided to do 10 reps. I was like so in the zone here, but these are absolutely insane because the range of motion is just so deep. So same thing with any sort of lunge or like a Bulgarian split squat, like I always tell you, you're gonna sink, sink back and down into the lunge. You wanna place your feet so that your knee is stacked directly over your ankle and your shin is gonna be able to remain vertical throughout the whole movement. This is gonna make this lunge more glute focused, which is again what my goal always is. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm also coming forward with my torso and leaning forward just to scotch to sh increase that stretch in my glutes, increase the range of motion and again, make this more glute focused. So again, what's really important is you don't wanna be crowding and crashing down on your toe when you come down. That's why I always say back and down. As long as you're keeping that shin vertical, just know you're in the clear and that's gonna definitely be more glute focused. Of course, make sure you're keeping your core nice and tight and that you're driving up through your heels for every single rep here. The reason why I'm on a block is just to create create a larger range of motion because there's more for me to go through with that elevation on my front foot. Increasing that range of motion is just going to increase the time under tension for your muscles and therefore increase the difficulty and intensity. So it's so good. You're definitely going to feel this in your glutes, in your quads. It's going to make your inner thigh sore. Another quick thing is to make sure you're not cheating so much with pushing off on that back leg. You really want to focus on driving up with your front legs heel. You already know what it is. So we got hip thrusts, of course. So here I did four sets of 12. So this was a little bit higher reps because on my glute and hamstring day, I tend to go heavier, but lower reps. So this was a little bit lighter weight, but higher reps for me here. So to get into the hip thrust, I'm rolling the plate and the bar over my legs. I'm making sure that the barbell pad is in the center of the bar and that the bar is in the center of my lap. This is super important so that when you get up, you're very stable and you have a balanced distribution of weight. I'm positioning my feet so that when I come up here, my ankles are directly below my knee, okay? Your knee should always be stacked over your ankle so that when I'm blocking out at the top, as you can see, there's a 90 degree angle in my knee. This is just gonna be the best foot position to feel it in your glutes. These specifically are dead stop hip thrusts on a decline bench. If you guys have been following along, you guys know I'm obsessed with these. So dead stop meaning I'm coming down and putting those weights on the ground after each and every rep. But if you look closely, I'm not letting my butt come and touch the ground. I'm constantly keeping my butt off the ground. That little bit of constant tension there by not completely dropping your hips down does wonders with adding intensity and increasing the burn. So I really like to do that. The decline bench is great just because I feel like the height is better suited. Um, again, I'm five foot seven. So normal benches don't really bother me. They don't make it hard to like have the proper angle for a hip thrust, but this decline bench um, just, I feel like is the perfect height for me to have a perfect tabletop position when I come out and lock out and I'm parallel with the ground. And I also like that it allows you to put the weights back down for a dead stop because that elimination of momentum just makes it so much more challenging and make sure that you go through the full range of motion. I'm absolutely obsessed with these. I'm constantly pushing through my heels. Like I said, I'm constantly looking forward as well. I'm not letting my head pop back and I'm focusing on scooping up with my hips and really fully locking out at the top of that movement. That's the most important part with hip thrust because this is mainly targeting your glute maximus and the hardest part of this movement is in the shortened position when we are locking out at the top. So you really Really don't want to cheat that contraction because that is the most valuable portion of this movement. I wanted to show you guys just me taking it down because I always feel like it's kind of daunting to think about like how the hell did she set that up? So I got that bar from that overhead press so you can see me putting the weights back on and hack 
just lift up one end of the bar and let the weights fall off on the other side. That really helps and just makes it more efficient. So then I'm not going to lie. I was dying and this took me so long for absolutely no reason. So I kind of like skimped out at the end of this workout. I only did two sets of a little superset for like kind of a burnout action. But so I did seated abductions because I always like to incorporate motions that are in the lateral plane of motion. So this was just only for two sets, 20 reps a piece. This position I love the most and have lately have been resonating with it so my heels as you can see are on the second most i guess outer portion of the foot pad my toes are completely off the bench and my foot is um, completely to the outside portion of the foot pad as well if that makes sense i'm seated forward um, i'm having my hands behind me to help me see, sit upright and i'm really focused on sweeping my knees outward then i went into heel elevated sissy squats right after that because like i said it's a super set so you're going to repeat these back to back with no rest then you're going to rest and then repeat it again for a second set. So I did 25 reps of these. This is honestly my first time doing these. Not going to lie. I picked this to um, burn out my quads a little bit. But honestly, this was like cardio more than anything. This got my heart rate up so insanely high. I was using a 30 pound dumbbell, I believe here. Um, and basically the having your heels elevated is just going to shift the focus onto your quads because it's making you push through your toes which like i've been saying previously how i want you to push through your heels that's going to be more glute focused pushing through on your toes is going to be more quad focused so that's where our heels are elevated to force us to push through our toes and target our quads here and i'm just saying this was this was cardio so enjoy people this one's a burner though don't underestimate it <laughs> You guys, uh, that was like, listen, that workout was challenging. I'm just gonna leave it at that. It wasn't even like, it was kind of basically like four and a half exercises at the end, but I just went very like hard the first three and I just was wiped. And for some reason that took me so long to get through and I didn't even talk to anybody. So I don't know why that just took me like pretty much a full two hours. So much for a quick workout, but I really wanna go get Machi. So we are gonna go get some. Yeah, I'm so excited. I need this because I feel like dead for my workout. I usually have like a snack and lunch before I hit legs and all I had today was breakfast because I worked out earlier and that's also what's making me feel weird. Mmm. Ha. They actually asked me in there why I do half oat, half almond milk, which I figured I would share. So I love the taste and the consistency of oat milk. Like it's thicker, it's creamier, it's sweeter. But when I have the whole thing with oat milk, it's like feels heavy. Like, cause I usually just have my matcha at home with just water. So when it's all of that oat milk, I'm like, oh, that was kind of heavy. Like, and I don't really like to drink heavy things, but I don't like when it's just almond milk because I don't think it tastes as good. So I want the taste of the oat milk, but like the almond milk to lighten it up. So that's why I do half and half. And they're like, that's such a good idea. And I was like, thank you. Yeah! Does anyone else get so freaking excited when their package gets delivered? Let me tell you a backstory that no one cares about, but this package uh, was supposed to come on Saturday. It's now Thursday. I've been watching this thing like a hawk. It got lost. There was no delivering date, and it was like delay, pending, unable to give you a new delivery date. I'm freaking out! Okay, couple things. This parking right now... <laughs> Me and three cars, none of us are even remotely in a parking spot, first thing. Second thing, someone commented not too long ago, it was a video that I did that was sponsored by Lululemon. And I did a Lululemon like activewear haul, ended the video with a Walmart haul, and someone was like, Lululemon sponsorship to Walmart grocery shop, our girl has a wide range. And you know what, I laughed so hard because I literally was like, if there is a comment that fully embodies me at my core, it's that. And you know what? We're going to do it again. I'm going to go with my freaking $10 matcha into Walmart to go buy some groceries. Then we're going to go to Whole Foods to get pesto because I don't trust any of the ingredients here in Walmart. I can never find any without like any vegetable oils or anything like that. Like I want it with olive oil. Pesto is like like jelly. Like when you try to go find like clean jelly, it's like everything is high fructose corn syrup in it or like corn syrup solids. It's like hard to find a clean jelly. Like that's something you have to go to Whole Foods for. Pesto, like you should go to Whole Foods for. I am so hyper this matcha brought me back. Oh, welcome to the party. Another person who can't park like the rest of us. I'm so hyper I need to go. 
There's a doge staring at us. Esquita, why are you judging, bro? I'm gonna move. Because we're way too close quarters to anyone. Like, that person who just pulled up, like, wouldn't have been able to even get out of his car. How do you even fit in there? Okay, we gotta get out. Guys, I think this mantra has cracked in it. Yo, we've been skirting. I have to pee so badly, like this isn't even funny. When I have to pee this bad, my bladder freaking can touch China. Like my stomach sticks out so much and it's so uncomfortable. Whew, that matcha went right through me, boys. Excuse me, where's your restroom by any chance? If you go all the way down, there's like a cafeteria. Oh, okay. like you see where the TV's playing? Yeah. Right to the right. Oh, perfect. All right, thank you so much. which I actually found one with like minimal ingredients. And the avi, this is simply just for today's lunch because I've been obsessed with avocado pesto, like turkey or tuna sandwiches and sourdough. I'm obsessed with it. And, and, and why am I blanking? Uh, dried mango. I love dried mango. This is the best kind because all the ingredient is is organic dried mango. This stuff is literally candy. <laughs> People, here's a teaser for next YouTube video. I'm so excited! Wow! Okay, I'm gonna give you like a 30 second haul because it was really small. You guys already saw what I got from Whole Foods. And then from Walmart, we got bananas, red seedless grapes, romaine lettuce, two lemons, a cucumber, a uh, turkey bacon, more dark chocolate chips, sourdough um, English muffins. These are for my brother. Maple syrup for my dad with his Kodiak pancakes, like you guys know that he loves, in the dark chocolate flavor. A wet and wild eyelash curler because this is the eyelash curler that I use and I actually really love it. It's just the normal one from wet and wild. And then Sabra roasted pine nut hummus. Okay, no, it's the end of the video, but I did want to talk with you guys about how to structure a workout because I've been getting questions about it. I've been getting requests to make a video on it. It's really pretty simple, like the main equation that I use to structure a workout. So I'm going to share with you what I do. Basically, when you start your workout, you want to start with your compound movements. This could be anywhere between like two and four exercises. Usually for me, it's like two to three exercises within my workout. And these are going to be compound movements, meaning moves that you can target more than one muscle group with, more than one joint is most likely involved in the movement pattern. And it's usually exercises that can really yield a lot of weight. Like those are the exercises that you can max out on, um, really push your weight and really go heavy and push yourself and really implement progressive overload or essentially just increasing difficulty over time. So those are like your main, that's like the backbone of your workout. You could say that's like your foundation and what you're going to build off of. So those compound movements are so important. That's what's really going to help yield you the most progress for sure because you kind of get the most bang for your buck with them. They're the most efficient exercises because like I said, they target more than one muscle group during each rep. Compound movement examples, that's like a squat, um, a lunge, um, hip thrust, because you can do a lot of weight with the hip thrust. You can do lat pull downs, barbell rows, um, bench pressing, all of those sort of things, or like a military overhead press. All of those things have more than one muscle involved, more than one joint involved in the movement pattern. They could yield a lot of weight and they work a lot of muscles at once. So 
they're gonna take the most energy out of you like I said they're gonna be what you're pushing the most weight on so they're gonna take a lot of energy a lot of effort so you want to do those in the beginning of your workout now in terms of rep schemes right compound movements since you're doing heavier weight right they're exercises that yield a heavier load you're not gonna be able to do the same amount of reps that you would be able to do with like a hamstring curl, something like that, where that is more of an isolation move, right? Which we'll get to. You're gonna be training most often, not always, but most often till failure with those compound movements. If you're, especially if your muscle, your, if your, excuse me, priority is muscle growth. The, this rep range is gonna be a lot lower than the more isolation movement. So here, I personally like to focus on the eight to 12 rep range. That's a classic hypertrophy or muscle growth range, but plenty of people will train from three reps all the way up to 12 reps, like I said. The lower end of like three-ish reps, that's gonna be really training for strength, more so like muscle size. It's still super beneficial to help, you know, build increase your muscle size as well but that's technically more so like the strength category where usually the sweet spot is a little bit higher rep range in the hypertrophy range but side note there has been proof that muscle growth can occur at any rep range whether it's six reps 12 reps or 20 reps just as long as you're really training until failure or at least close until failure all right we talked about step one which is organizing our compound movements then you're going to slowly start to be transitioning into isolation movements now these are movements that only involve usually one muscle group at a time and one joint is involved in the movement for example, a leg extension, right? So the only joint that is involved in that hinge is your knee, right? And the only muscles that are involved is are your quads. So these are all gonna be exercises that yield a lower weight. You're not gonna be able, like no one maxes out on leg extension or like cable kickbacks, things like that. So these are movements such as, like I said, cable kickback, leg extension, leg curl, bicep curl, any sort of tricep extension, any sort of rear delt fly. Those are gonna be your isolation movements. So like I said, to anywhere between two to four compound movements and then I would say anywhere between two to four as well isolation moves at the end of the workout this is just to help increase volume um, and just help to stimulate the muscle fibers more because volume also is proven to help with muscle growth as well so in terms of rep range like I said since you're doing lower weights here because you these exercises just don't yield heavier weight when I mean when I say they don't yield heavier weight like for example you can't max out on a cable kick pack because you're most likely really going to hurt your back you're just not in a stable position like your lower back you're just not in a stable position to be moving so much weight right so it's going to cause other muscles to compensate for it and it's you're going to be very prone to injury so in terms of the rep range here this is going to be anywhere between like I would say 10 reps anywhere up to 20 reps 30 reps plus depending on if you're using one of these as a burnout situation like I said muscle growth happens at many different rep ranges which matters is the intensity um, that you kind of are up keeping during your set you want to make sure you're diversifying your training especially just in terms of recovery right because that's super important to allow our muscle fibers to you know recover and repair in order to actually see that growth that we're looking for our muscle when we train we actually are creating micro tears in our muscle fibers and then when we eat protein and just eat food in general etc and rest we give those muscle fibers time to repair grow bigger grow stronger and be ready for a heavier load and just more intensity during the workout so you want to diversify when you're going to failure so with those compound movements most always i'm training till failure but if i'm feeling really tired and i need like a deload week or something like that where i need to drop the intensity after maybe six weeks of really intense sessions that is totally a-okay so in order to kind of diversify i'll go to failure with the compounds and then maybe stop anywhere between like three and ten reps of failure um with those isolation isolation movements excuse me <laughs> so that's really it like that's it <laughs> like it doesn't need to be that complicated but i did want to address burnouts because like just in case i don't do burnouts all the time by any means they're not necessary they're not the driving factor of muscle growth at all metabolic stress or like the pump and the burn that you feel that does contribute to muscle growth for sure so that's when those burnouts would be um, beneficial but 
progressive overload, like I'm saying, constantly trying to up the weight sets or reps with those compound movements, those are for sure going to be the driving forces um, of your muscle growth, as well as like making sure your nutrition is on point and all that sort of stuff. You can implement burnouts, but don't feel like you absolutely need them. I usually use burnouts when I'm like short on time and I just kind of want to really burn out the muscle before I leave and like really build up that metabolic stress, like I'm saying, because I don't have enough time for like higher volume with the other other exercises welcome to my office this is my office chair this is where i sit to work you know i used to be so good at accents you guys like australian accent no problem french accent second nature i can't do any of them anymore and i'm like sad i like start to speak i'm like what was that anyway i did also want to touch on supersets tri-sets circuits etc don't take like i don't know everything i'm going to be the first one to admit that i don't know everything there's plenty of more experienced trainers but i am a certified personal trainer for the past like two and a half three years i've been training for five to six years so i do know from experience and like my own pieces of knowledge but with those supersets and tri-sets and circuits the main benefit of them well i guess in terms of like just for convenience factor they're obviously a lot more time efficient they're basically a superset triset and circus just essentially meaning you're not resting until you complete all of the exercises that you have in that superset triset circuit then you rest and then you repeat it so it's just saving time because you don't have to account for two different rest periods for your exercises or however many exercises you have in there but it also increases intensity which is also a factor of progressive overload because you're decreasing rest times so it can help in that regard again i mainly will superset two exercises together when I'm short on time or if I feel like I've kind of maxed out on the weight that I could use optimally then I'll superset it with something else to keep up that intensity that sort of thing don't feel like you need them definitely especially if you're a beginner to the gym focus on just nailing those five to six exercises that you chose for your workout before getting fancy and like adding supersets and stuff like that it also helps with like adding more of a cardiovascular component as well like the end of the workout I just showed you guys now supersetting those two things like definitely got my heart rate up now we're on the floor in terms of how many exercises to do total, I mean, I kind of already gave you the range, but like leg day can be anywhere between like four and six exercises, maybe seven. I used to do like eight to 10 exercises, which is just like, that's when you're, if you could do that many exercises, that's just what they call junk volume because clearly you didn't have the intensity and intention with your original exercises that you did. So anywhere between four to six is ideal. Maybe you have to squeeze in a seventh if you're doing like a burnout or something. And for upper body day, it depends, but I would say again, anywhere between like five and eight. Upper body depends on your intensity. I can do closer to like seven or eight exercises in my upper body days because I'm only hitting upper body once. So in order to appropriately like hit enough adequate volume for the week, it's kind of necessary for me to do that, that, that many exercises. And also because I am trying to hit every single muscle group in just one day. This is kind of fun because I'm jumping around my room. But <laughs> last thing I want to touch on is training frequency. So again, this is gonna really gonna, gonna come down to your split, which I have plenty of week of workouts videos and I actually did a whole video on which split is best. So I have about like four different splits in that video that you can maybe choose from for what best suits you. But again, it really depends on your overall, like how often you're able to get to the gym in the first place. But adequate volume is training each muscle group anywhere between like one to two times a week, maybe three times a week. The only time I would say three times a week is like if you're going to the gym only three times and you're doing full body maybe every single time that week that would be an example of that but more often than not it's going to be hitting each muscle group about one to two times in a week i just talked so fast i'm like on i feel like an energizer bunny in this video i'm sorry all right you guys so i think that's everything that i have to share with you about how to structure your own workout if you still have any other questions for me feel free to dm me at lift on instagram or comment down below i'll definitely get back to you or i'll just keep it in mind for when i talk about this again in another vlog but i feel like those were definitely the basics i think i got everything so hopefully you guys will be all squared away and all set to start you know setting up your own workouts and stuff with all that being said thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so freaking much for 50k i'm gonna be honest it like hasn't set in like i it hasn't processed I don't know how I'm gonna say thank you on Instagram. I don't like I just I just don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Like I knew this was coming, but I just still was like I don't know, I need to process it. But thank you guys so much for all of your love and support. I'm so excited and feel so grateful and honored and privileged to be able to do this job. So I'm sending you guys so so much love and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.